Good. Get it set up good. Hey everybody, my name's Jason. Uh, do a lot of flint mapping videos, mainly on TikTok. So it's Black Knife 60 over on TikTok. But I decided to do one just for YouTube. And we're going to use a very difficult piece of Pearson chert is what this is. I just saw the name outside. You can see uh, on another piece of stone that I have back there. But you can see an ancient flake taken here. And you know this is old because you can still see the cortex here. The patina. This is a more recent flake. So that's a very pretty color. Now, I wanted to do a video on this piece of rock because it's uh, it's very blocky. It's very thick for its width and length. So what we're going to do is clean this up as best we can and get as big a point as we can out of it and we'll get small points out of the flakes. So let's get started. Okay, so... And I should have explained a little better there, but there was a natural platform to hit and you want these early flakes, you want these to, to count. You want them to go a long way. They're gonna kind of set the tone in a sense for the rest of it. All right, that's a good platform there. We want those flakes to go as close to all the way across. It's crusty in there, okay, good. All right, so now we've got ourselves a nice platform here. We used an existing platform and we got ourselves a nice platform here and we're going to take a big flake down through here. And this is going to be an interesting spot. So let's see. I might just zoom this in a little closer. There we go make it harder for me to keep it in the frame, but y'all will be able to see it better. All right, so that ran in and then it hit like a freeze cracked area and an old cone there. So this may not go well. Last piece of this I did was very clean, but it is not, not happy about it right now. I'm just making more incipient cones in it as we go here. All right, we got past it there. That was nasty. All that kind of stuff like that. That's really, you start seeing stuff like that. You know you got some problems in the stone. We still got a mess to deal with there. Oh, mosquitoes are getting me. Oh. Gary's crazy, y'all. He's stalking me from the rock pile. Gary's always watching. Take a few more flakes on this heavy platform we got here. Yeah, so there's the crack. See it runs sideways through the stone. All right, so we, we used a platform there, and that was just a guess on my part, but it worked out pretty well. We caught the edge of this right here and knocked that off. So you really need to favor this side. I think this side's relatively clean. So we need to favor this side and get all this weirdness off. Now, there might be a point in there, but I don't know. If I had to guess, I'd say this, this piece here is just way too damaged. We've had some chance I might have to go catch a phone call. So if I do, I'll edit that out. So you'll notice I'm not really grinding much here. Not doing much of braiding. And that's because I don't need to. I can hit high on the platform. I guess it's a hammer stone flaking instead of a copper bopper. So we're getting to some cleaner rock here. Overall, this point's gonna be shorter than what I wanted, but there's not much I wanna be able to do about that at this point. Mainly because there was damaged, the damaged place on the inside of the stone. We're gonna keep taking advantage of this convexity. We gotta hit deep on this platform here because see this little hollow, this little dip? It can stop a flake. So we gotta hit high and undercut it. And I'll probably follow that all the way to the end. There we go. There it is. 
It didn't like that spot. It tried to hinge, but I hit it hard enough. It just blew through it. We can probably get another one right there. Nope. Might need to braid that. And we might not get it to release there again because we crushed it pretty good. Oh, we got it. That was a good flake too. And they're breaking up, but this stone's very, it's got a lot of issues in it right here. We're starting to run out of convexity, which means we'll go to the other side then shortly. See, I normally do stuff on TikTok, but then I get people asking me to do YouTube. And I should start, and I'm going to. I download some lives and put on here for people to watch because apparently I put them to sleep. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Ah, oh, this stone. What's going to happen is we're going to get it thin. But they want to be able to uh, to watch the video so they can fall asleep. And hey, I can do that. Man, this is going to be tough because that the healed seam. Eesh. Now I might be fighting a losing battle here. But you never know. Do you try? Got a lot of it there. Now we got another platform and ridge here. hard as I'm hitting this, if this was obsidian, I'd be overshooting it every flake, but it's not. It seems to be a really quality flint. Didn't have many pieces of this, but I gotta quit saving, saving stuff. So it's almost Halloween, man. I think I'm gonna make something cool to put in my Etsy shop for Halloween. Uh, there is an Etsy shop. It's blackknifestoneworks at gmail.com. Anybody's interested in finished pieces? I've been catching up on some custom stuff. So I need to get some more stuff made to put in the shop. But I will. But I got to get my custom guys taken care of there. All I'm doing now is just easing around the edge, taking flakes kind of opportunistically. So we've got kind of a preformed type shape here. flake there and one there and that'll have the base pretty well sorted for that side now I'm just going to take some little flakes to make it all blend together real nice surface contour Rusty there. And some patina, some cortex in deep.
So that's what I'm seeing when I'm looking. There needs to be a little flake here. But I don't like the looks of that surface contour, so I'm just going to brush down through and take some little tiny short flakes. And that's going to set that up for me to go back through there again when I decide to. Now there's a bunch of hinges down here, which I don't like the looks of. I don't want to flake into, so... Chop that. This piece is actually for a custom order. But I figured why not. Oop, I hit the camera, y'all. What you're looking for is ridges to run. Right surface contour. You want it to be lens shaped. You can drive flakes where it's lens shaped. If it's not lens shaped, you're gonna make hinges. And you want the flakes to go past halfway if you want to thin it. And that's flint napping in a nutshell. It's a lot more complicated than that. But. And I'll pick up any of these big flakes when I'm done because I don't have much of this material and I think it's kind of cool looking. I got a delta here. So we're going to swap down to a much smaller bopper here. Knock that delta off. There we go. You got to be careful with those. They're a good way to break a point, those things. And we're gonna work on this side. And hope that I got enough material left to finish the point I wanna make for the fella. We'll be pretty good, I think. Those flakes are traveling really well. That one kind of dove. That's all right, though. That's not bad. And it's going to make it look like a very authentic looking point. Having a little, having a little bit of roughness on it. So if y'all are watching this, because I don't do much on YouTube, I get asked to do things and put videos on YouTube. And uh, I do it every now and then, and nobody watches them, or they don't get any views, and nobody comments. So if you're coming from TikTok or wherever you see my work, uh, and you want me to keep doing this, make sure you comment and subscribe and like and all the things here for YouTube. I'd like to do more on YouTube. But... I mean, some of my videos over on TikTok get 10 million views. You know, here, here I'm lucky to get 10. <laughs> and I'm sure that's a, something I'm doing wrong, of course, but. piece of stone so considering what we started with and all the problems it had i'm pretty pleased that this <clears throat> turned out as well as it did it's not perfect it's definitely got some issues Probably going to use the pressure flaker to notch it because I want some kind of bigger notches on this. <clears throat> yeah, see, he was hinging out in there. This whole line of hinges. All right, that's where we're at. I might just 
zoom us back out a little bit. I like it. I think I inhaled a gnat or something. So where are we at? So we're only at 15 minutes. So I'm gonna say that's pretty good. I can't believe it's only been 15 minutes. And we'll be ready to notch this soon because I'm not gonna go too crazy with the pressure flaking on this one. I kind of want to leave. That might, oh, I need to take a percussion flake there. I kind of want to leave some of the heavier flake scars on it. prettiest point by any means but I think it's supposed to storm this evening down here in central Georgia. Nice hinge there, but I might just leave it. between my legs so I can use the power from my leg muscles to help me push off longer pressure flakes and uh, they're hinging out right there where that material changes color there's not too much I can do about that It'd be a cool looking point though I think If I wasn't doing it on camera, I would do it with indirect probably, but indirect it's hard to film with the setup I have. So Typically the darker the material, the better it chips. That's not always like a hard and fast rule, but that has been my experience. I need a few more percussion flakes on that side. It is really thick. And I don't like that hinge there because I don't think hinges happened on, on actual point. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But this would be like an Adelaide dart size point. And you see that hinge? How the it's in the same direction as the tip. So that hinge would actually hit an animal and stop. Stop the whole point. I don't think they would have left a hinge like that. It would have kind of made the whole thing pointless. I am going to indirect this because that's going to be the, the easiest and best way, I think. I'll do as best I can to get you the shots. It's not really indirecting all that well. That is some hard stuff. And that's really our last, our last two raw at that hinge. And it's, might be able to get one more flake off right there. And the mic. 
get it. Got some of it. Let's see if we can get one more. Yeah. Probably too much. But it'll be all right. That helped. Indirect is like cheat mode sometimes, especially for these non-glass like materials that are tough. It just lets you put as much force in a small place very accurately. So I like the overall shape here. It's got a little twist because of me chasing that hinge. We'll get some of that out. We'll lose a little length on it. That's pretty close there. pressure flake out that one. If it was glass or obsidian, I wouldn't even question whether I'd be able to do it, but it was a very, very tough little piece of stone we got here. Now I've got stacked in two directions, and that could be from some bad spots that are already in the stone, because we've, we've lost a lot of the dark material at the tip especially, now that's just kind of gray. So we may have to pick that off somehow. See what we can do. This material is uh, really takes the copper. You can still see the pieces, even where I just kind of graze it with the flaker. It leaves copper on the material. So now we're doing some fine, finer pressure flakes to kind of make it sharper. It's got a lot of fingernail flakes in it. This is like a totally different stone than what I worked the other night. The other one had a bunch of clean flaking. I should sharpen this pressure flaker tip too. so many mosquitoes out here tonight even with the fan they're eating me alive gotta get the thermosel out i had to get out the mr clean magic eraser to get the copper off too look at that i just rubbed it on there i don't remember that being an issue with the last piece of piercing that i worked i bet the little dark colored flakes will make some nice sharp arrowheads though 
Let's see now. I might be able to grab a flake right there and turn one in that direction and get rid of that stack. Let's see. Horseshoe nail notcher because it's uh, it would eat this material up, or this material would eat it up because it's just it's very hard. See if I can just grab it and pick it. It just does not want to, does not want to cooperate. And I left copper all up in it. Let's try it one more. <clears throat> hey, we got it. Ooh. I had to put a lot of force into that. This was obsidian. That would have been been it that would have broke the point for sure this thing just shrugged it off and right at the tip no less stuff's pretty pretty strong stuff this would make a good point then be a hard one to break so we need to even out the base a little bit. How does that look? That needs to go. Now these notches are not going to be very deep. Um, and again, that's just going to be the nature of the material. It's thick. This would be a very durable point. You know, judging by how much trouble I'm having with flaking it. It would also hold up pretty good in use. And there it is. That's a nice one. Get us some channel flakes through here and get us get it notched and see what we come up with. I could tell just by the way the abrader's skating over it, it's uh it's some serious stone. And that it did run some flakes on it though. I had to pick that off in a little bit. It's loose, it just hang nailed in place, and that was it. That one didn't run quite as far, so when you're uh, notching, you gotta watch out for that stuff, because you wanna notch the thicker side first, because that one's gonna be the shorter set of notches. It'll be easier to notch, to match both sides that way. hit that lighter material and just stopped it's weird doing this on youtube i normally have people in the comments and i'm doing it live and i'm interacting and now i'm just talking to myself in the shed maybe i am crazy i mean i do talk to that rock that does make me crazy 
I mean, I try not to talk to the rock when I'm not on here. My dogs, my girlfriend is away from home tonight. The dogs are by themselves in there and they're none too pleased about it. So. When I get done, I'm gonna have to go in there and hang out with my puppies. She's okay, I got a point I need to wire wrap. So that's inside work. say that's notched that point is thick and I could have got a little more aggressive with the thinning but really I did get pretty aggressive I didn't really get anywhere with it This is man rock. I did get that hanging flake off though. But I really pushed it there. Pressure flaking's tough. It's easier to notch with this uh, with this pressure flaker though because it's got a little more oomph. And I set it and then I stalled it. Now I got it to go. You just have to be careful you don't let it turn and catch the ear because it'll just rip it right off. And that's it. It's stalled out. Sharpen that and get into it. Let's have a look at this notch. I think I can grab it right there. Yep. Maybe been wishful thinking. Yeah, we got a flick off there. That's going to let us turn it around, I think. We got our platform set up right. Yep, there's a big notch flake. Oh, she's in trouble now, boys. One more. Okay. 
Let's even them up a little bit. Make a nice necklace point too. I'll probably do that with it if a uh, guy don't want it on his display. Full of flakes to even that out a little bit. A couple right there. Tips a little bit weak, but I do like it. I just gotta figure out how to get the copper marks off. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. An arrowhead from a super blocky piece of flint. And that one's pretty cool. That one's a very, uh, looks like the real deal type of arrowhead so i gonna be uploading that to youtube y'all check it out um black knife stone works on etsy black knife stone works on instagram and youtube black knife stone works on gmail.com or at gmail.com uh, check us out on tiktok at black knife 60 do a lot of live videos there you can interact with me love it thank you